victory songs Then you'll understand the reason Why the way the saints of God may carry on So we watch out over our children Let the from a heart that's been washed clean as I run, no one running from a past that's been redeemed to the world in my good crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. Hope beyond the grave. Every life's a different story. How we let us out of darkness into light. There's no way to keep us silent. Every breath's another chance to testify. Testify. So I shout, no one shout. From a heart that's been washed clean If I run, no one running From a past that's been redeemed To the world it might look crazy There's just no telling what you're gonna do In that moment Jesus gets a hold of you So if I shout, no one shouting From a heart that's been washed clean
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. this morning or wherever you are today I was thinking before we before I was getting ready for this I have never in my life missed the church the worship and the prayer that I am so used to but this morning I want to talk to you for just a little bit about the necessity for prayer in the church, necessity for prayer in the day that we live. Today we are in a little bit different situation, and I'm hoping that someday we'll be back together. But I want you to know I miss the church, and I do miss hearing you and hearing you worship God. If you'll read with me real quick in Ephesians Ephesians 6 and 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. There is no replacement for prayer in the church. There's no replacement for a prayer closet. There's no replacement for finding somewhere to bow your knee in prayer. There comes a time in your life when only prayer can do what it is that you need done in your life. There are things that God wants to give us that cannot be sung, cannot be worshipped up. But the only thing that can happen is that they are prayed up. And the only thing that can happen is that we find a place of prayer. It's a key. Prayer is the key to heaven, and faith can unlock the door. Prayer revivals are important. Sometimes it happens when we give ourselves to prayer. Something happens to ourselves, and something happens to our church. And I believe that there will come a day when we will be together again. But I also believe in now if we could just keep praying, keep doing what it is that we do, there will be a day when we come together one more time and we will feel the presence of the Lord and we will feel God move. If you look at the past days of history of our church, you'll find that prayer to be a key factor. Prayer is powerful. There were events that took place during the days and the history of our church. Our churches were steeped in prayer. Our homes were baptized in prayer. Preaching was always preceded by prayer. 
altars were always covered with prayer. Everything we did and everything that we do should be marked by prayer. Prayer is such an important thing. God can do so much when we give ourselves to praying for things that really matter in life. Hezekiah was told that he was going to die, and the Bible said he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed. God answered that prayer and added 15 years to his life. The Bible is filled with examples of prayers that were answered when people were in need and when circumstances were dire. Prayer for direction and prayer for the sick and prayer for deaf ears and prayer for the victory over our enemies and prayer for cleansing and prayer for renewal. Prayer for a host of things that men needed from God. Every saint of God cannot continue without prayer. There are reasons why we need to pray. We need to pray. It's like, it's like something that we silly we live off of and something that we, we survive off of. And it's something that we are needed today is prayer. Prayer is it's not like a drive through where you go through and you zip through and you sing a few songs and you make a few requests and then God just drops it in your lap. There is something about prayer that it empties the heart. Something about finding a place of prayer, finding a clause of the prayer that when you find it, you bow your knee to, to him and you begin to worship and you begin to tell him and you begin to empty the things that are inside of your heart. Prayer empties the heart. Without prayer, you begin, you collect baggage you collect things in your mind, you collect things in your heart, things that begin to drag you down, but the only remedy for what it is, is just prayer, prayer at an altar. First Peter 5 says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that you may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him for he cares for you. There are times that we seek out human answers to try to fix the difficult matters in your life. Put the cares of life, can I tell you, put it in the hand of God. The Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the purity of the heart, for the Lord can answer our needs. But when the heart is full, when the heart is full of the cares of life and Sin besets us and habits weight us down and things become difficult. Prayer becomes difficult and oftentimes we give up and we quit praying and we don't pray. Instead, we put other things in its place. But I want to tell you this morning, it is important that you find somewhere to find a clause of the prayer there will come a day in your life and there will come a day when you will need, you will so desperately, desperately need to find a place of prayer. You will find you will need to call on God. You will need him someday. But oh, I'll tell you, there's something about somebody that has stayed in connection with God that you have automatically, you have a direct line for that thing that you need. He's always there. Hannah was a woman who was, had a sorrowful spirit because of her barrenness. Her barrenness sent her to a place of prayer where she began to wail before the Lord. She was made fun of. She was chastened by Eli. There are times when you empty your heart before God. And the things around you may seem, people around you may seem like uh, that they look down on you. But it's in these kinds of meetings, it's in these kinds of prayer meetings, that something is birthed and changes the religious landscape and things begin to change in your life and change things are changed in nations is when you come to a place and you come to a place where you can empty out all that is in your heart and let God know the desires of your heart that God can do some great things. Hannah literally unloaded her heart into God. How can we ever hear from God with a heart that is overloaded 
with the cares of life. Hannah could have remained sorrowful in her spirit for the rest of her life, but a prayer meeting changed all of that. She got desperate in the house of the Lord. When the heart gets empty and it becomes desperate, God can feel it with revelation and he can feel it with power. There comes a time in your life when desperation sets in. But in that time of desperation, if you can somehow find a closet of prayer and you can somehow find a place to kneel before God, wherever you are this morning, I'm here to tell you that there is a God in heaven that hears and answers your prayers. Yet when we are unloading our heart before God, we must understand that it's more than just a list of things that we want. And it's more than just a list of things that we need. It's more than just a need for rent money. It's more than just a need for something that has to do with a spouse. It's more than just a need of a doctor. It's more than just a need of, of things that we want in life. Because what happens is when we commit them, uh, the, the list before him, of requests that seemingly are unreasonable. And then when God does not answer, we get upset at God because he didn't answer. Sometimes the best answer that God can give you is no. Sometimes the best answer for what it is that you want is a, a, a no. We can't turn it into a laundry, li a laundry list, but prayer is when you begin to understand the attributes of God and seek after those things. You begin to seek after his righteousness, his love, his knowledge, his wisdom, his holiness. These are attributes of God that can, be, can, can add faith to our prayers. There is nothing beyond the reach of God. There's nothing beyond the reach of our God. Prayer acknowledges that the answer is beyond your ability. Prayer acknowledges that you are in need. It also it un lets you understand that God is far more complex and bigger than what you are. It'll help you understand that sometimes you cannot fix everything. That you need God. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. Therefore, you need to know that I don't have all the answers. Sometimes it's not necessary to know the answers, but it's just necessary to know who has the answers. It's necessary to understand that he has the answers that you need in your life. And he has whatever it is this morning that you need. God has it and he understands. Don't try to figure it out alone, but find somewhere to pray. Find somewhere to touch God. It doesn't matter how great you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much education you have. It doesn't matter how much clout you have in position. I'm here to tell you this morning that you are in need of prayer. You still need to pray. Prayer anchors itself in God. It is our hope in God. Not all in answers, it's not all the answers in the world would attempt to offer me, but I need to know what God says and I need to know his will in my life. There are a lot of old songs that we sing. There is one of my favorite songs that we sing. And I was thinking about it to, as I was on my way here uh, today. It's an old song that we sing that says, where do I go? When there's no one else to turn to, who do I talk to when no one wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I go to the rock because I know that he is able. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains and the mountains stand by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I will stand. When I need a shelter and when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I hide when the storms of life are threatening? 
Where do I run when the winds of sorrow blow? Is there a refuge in the time of tribulation? Cause I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. When the earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter and when I need a friend. I go to the rock. When all the earth all around me. I go to the rock. When the things around me seem as though they're failing. I go to the rock. When I stand beside the bed of a lo or bedside of a loved one, I know I can go to the rock and I know that he is able to do whatever it is at that moment that I need to do. I go to the rock. There was a man named Jonah. Jonah was a preacher. He was a man. He was a man who was half backslid. And he was determined to do whatever it is that he wanted to do. But there was a problem with that. He wanted to do what he wanted to do in direct conflict with what God wanted him to do. One of the greatest lessons that we can learn from the story of Jonah is that decisions made without prayer can lead to storms and destruction. The whole reason Jonah ended up in the storm, in the belly of a well and nearly dead, was because he made a decision that he did not pray about. If we make decisions that are not based on earnest prayer and inquiry of God, if we make decisions, if we go to people that are unspiritual, that are just as confused that we are, and we seek direction from God, it will have always have a bad outcome. But when we need something from God and we need direction from Him, I encourage you this morning to find a place wherever it is that you are. If you have to kneel wherever you are, let God know what it is that you're going through and let God know what it is that, that it hinders you. There's something about that place of prayer that will bring you closer than you've ever been before. I need prayer and I need a prayer closet. You cannot trust your decision to the right thing when you can't see around the corner. But I cannot tell you that God sees what's around your corner. God sees every aspect of your life and God knows what direction you are going. Prayer brings direction. What Isaiah calls the wonderful counselor. He is a wonderful counselor and with him you need nothing else. But you got to get to the wonder count you got to get the wonderful counselor involved. You have to seek his will before you do anything. Can I encourage you this morning to seek God? Can I encourage you to call on the Lord? Can I encourage you wherever it is and whatever you're going through? Can I encourage you to seek the hand of God? Before you take that job, before you make that financial decision, before you get married, before you decide to walk out of the church and leave the church, can I tell you, before you make that decision, can I tell you to seek God one more time? Can I tell you to fall on your knees one more time and ask God to let you feel his presence and let God let him feel you one more or let him uh, you feel him one more time. Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. When you begin to acknowledge God, he will keep you and he will help you. You have to include God in every aspect of your life. You have to include Him. He's got to be a part of your life. He's got to be a part of everything that you do. I was reminded of the Lord's Prayer. It simply says, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The will of God has got to be taken care of in heaven. But the challenge is the will up there has to come down here. You have to put the will of God first, and you have to put God first in your life. I need divine direction, and prayer will help. Prayer is not a monologue. It's not a dialogue. God can talk to you if you listen to him. You can't come to the altar and put everything on God and get up and leave. 
but you have to come to an altar, put everything on God. But sometimes you have to linger in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes you have to talk to him and spend time with him. Prayer causes you to turn loose of an old nature that you want to manipulate things in life. There are some who get pouty when God doesn't answer the prayer in the exact manner that you think it ought to be done. But if you can, rel if you can ever relent to the will of God, God is not manipulated by our fleshly whims. You have to make up your mind that you're going to serve God no matter what. You're going to serve God no matter what. You're going to serve God no matter what comes against us and what comes against the world that we live in today. There are a lot of things that have come against us. There are things that we don't understand but we have to learn to serve God in the midst of that. And prayer is so important. It's so important in your life. He, is, he alone is God. And He alone is to be prayed. Prayer is not over when you have, when you have had said your prayer. And it's the only effective when you take divine direction from Him. You have to listen to the voice of God. Prayer strengthens your relationship. Prayer strengthens your relationship. I miss, I was thinking the other day, I miss so much in my 54 years of life. I don't think I've ever missed coming together and I don't think I've ever missed the church as I do now. I don't think I've ever missed listening to the prayers of the saints of God. I miss you. I miss your prayers. I miss your praise. I have many times stood before you Listen to the praise and the worship and what you don't know is it's your worship and it's your praise that has strengthened me. I have walked away from the pulpit strengthened because of somebody else's prayers. I know this morning that you're praying and I know that this is a praying church, but it is necessary. It is necessary this morning that the church pray. It is necessary that we stay close to God. I know there is a day that will come and we will be together again and we will get to worship God again. And I am so looking forward to that day. But I wonder this morning, wherever you are and whatever is going on in your life, if you would just take a minute and touch God today. I wonder this morning if you would just find a place when I'm done. It might be your living room. It may be wherever you are. But I wonder this morning if you could find a place Get your family together and pray. I believe, I honestly believe that if our church prays, we come back prayed up. and We come back worshiping him after going through the last few months what we have gone through. I honestly believe that there is no telling what God will do. I believe that God wants to pour out his spirit upon us and upon Calvary Tabernacle. I do. I believe this morning that there is a God in heaven that wants to anoint us. He wants to give us what we need. And I would come asking you to come back to this house of God, worshiping him and giving him the praise that he is worthy of. Far too many have had a relationship with the church or a movement or a group, but prayer gets way beyond that. You have got to have a relationship with God. You have got to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is so important that you have a relationship with God. You have to get beyond just letting the Lord stay in the church. He has to be with you all of the time. I know over the past few days, God has been with you. And I know over the past few days that God has been with this church. But I also know that it is prayer that has kept us together in times that we could not meet together. But it's prayer in your homes. It's prayer in your life that has kept us and will continue to keep us in the days that are ahead. What if the sound, we, we're in a much different situation this morning. I don't have a praise team behind me. I don't have any of that with me. I am basically standing in a room by my, with me and somebody else. But I know one thing. 
I know one thing. When all of that is gone, if all of that were to be taken away from me, if we, didn't, we don't have a sound system, if we don't have prayers, singers behind us, if everything was not there, it would be so important that I keep a relationship with God. That I know that no matter where I'm at, even when I'm all by myself, that there's a God that I can still feel. There's a God that I can still raise my hands to. There's a God that right where you are, you can still call on Him no matter what's going on around you. And God will still answer your prayer this morning. I remember... I grew up in Home Missions Works, most of my memory. And I remember there was not much there. I remember my dad playing an old flat top guitar. My mom played the piano. And she wasn't the greatest piano player. My mom was not, or my dad was not the greatest guitar player. But I remember they would get together many a night in a Home Missions Work and they would begin to sing songs they would begin to sing and they would begin to clap and they would sing, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power. And would you over evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, wonder. And they would begin to sing those songs and they would begin to lift their hand and there may be 10 people in the room, but the Holy Ghost would come in and the Holy Ghost would begin to move. Oh, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter where you are or what room that you're in this morning. There's power in the blood of Jesus and you can still raise your hand and God can still let you feel the presence of the Lord. There's no substitute for the presence of God. There's no substitute for the relationship with Him. In the absence of a relationship with God, we have to get close to people who are close to God. I miss my church family. and I miss being close to you. I miss seeing you. I miss shaking your hand. I miss the hugs. I was thinking the other day I would give anything, some of you, to just be able to put my arm around you. But there will day will come when I will be able to do that again. But I miss it. But it is so important for us to be close to people who are close to God. We just ask Him to pray for our spiritual needs. We makes us stronger. There are times that you make me stronger. Times when your worship, you make me stronger and I draw from you and I draw from your spiritual walk with God. Amen. Hebrews 4, 14 says, seeing that we have, have a high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched in the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, just like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help in the time of need. Prayer will change you. Prayer will change you. Prayer will make you a different person. It will change your life. It will draw you close to him. Malachi said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Psalm said, before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to ever, everlasting, thou still art God. If God were to change, that would mean that he isn't perfect. But since God is perfect, he will never change. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. He will not change. He is always, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray because God changes us. Prayer changes your attitude. Prayer changes your perspective. Prayer changes your circumstances. Prayer changes your philosophies about life and Prayer changes me into what I ought to be as far as a saint of God. Prayer gives me favor with God. Prayer changes the people that I am around. Prayer changes your situation. Prayer will change 
whatever it is that you're going through. You can go into your secret closet of prayer and things begin to happen. Second Chronicles said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Hallelujah. I will heal whatever it is. I will heal their land. I remember growing up many, many times. I am the, I am the product. I know that I am a product, product of praying parents. I remember going many times and seeing my dad laying face down on an office floor in a church. And I remember him wailing before God. I remember a mom that would walk in. I would walk in and she'd be laying across her bed, wailing before God. I honestly believe it was those prayers and it was those things that God knew there would be a time in my life when I would have to remember the prayers of parents and I would have to remember the prayers of saints that were involved in my life. Can I tell you this this morning that when you pray and you begin to call out God, there are people around you that are listening to your prayers. There are kids that are growing up in our churches that need to know what it's like to hear mom and dad call out their name before God. There are people around us that need to hear the prayers of the saints. There are people around us that need to know what it's like to hear somebody who is broken and somebody who is praying and worshiping before God. We need to hear somebody that knows how to touch heaven and somebody that knows how to reach out and get a hold of God and get a hold of heaven and bring it down to where we live. I need somebody this morning to know that it is so important that we pray before God. It is so important today that we learn that we need prayer in our lives and in our church. Amen. You don't need to have a nervous breakdown. You need to have a breakthrough. You need to take authority, whatever it is, in prayer. You need to let the devil know this morning that your, his kingdom is coming down. You need to take authority in prayer and say, God, I stand here. You cannot have my children. You can't have my mind and you cannot have my life. It's time in this day that we live today that we pray like we've never prayed before. I'm calling on you this morning to bow a knee before God and pray like you've never prayed. I'm asking you this morning to lean on him one more time to get you through. There's nothing wrong with you that God cannot take care of. Take it to the Lord in prayer, would you? Prayer can unlock doors that have been closed. Prayer will bring a mighty wind of the Holy Ghost to you. Prayer will set you apart. Prayer will change your entire world. Acts 9, Paul was on his way to kill the church in Damascus when a great light knocked him down to the ground. When God spoke, he told him to go and pray for Saul of Tarsus. There might have been some hesitation on his part until God told him he prayed. He prayed. Because of that, he was used to be a persecutor, but now he is praying. He was used to be a killer of the saints, but now he's praying. He was used to be a godless man, but now he is a man of prayer. How many right now are in that shape, are in that place? There used to be all sorts of terrible things, but now they're like Saul. They are praying when men and women get together to pray. Can I tell you that anything can happen? If prayer changed you, I have a feeling that prayer can change everything. God is bigger than what it is that you're facing. Can I tell you that God is bigger than any pandemic? God is bigger than anything that you are facing right now. God is bigger than anything that you are looking at staring you in the face this morning, wherever you are. 
Can I tell you that God is bigger? God is bigger. God is greater. You don't have to understand. Can I tell you that the devil is a bully? He's a bully. If you've ever had to face, I remember as a child, I remember my dad could do anything. You've heard kids say, my dad can beat up your dad. My dad's greater than your dad. My dad can do all. If somebody would pick on you as a child or somebody would do something wrong to you, you would always go get your dad. Can I tell you this morning that you can go wherever you are and you can call on your heavenly father. You know what we need to do is we need to call on him sometimes and let our heavenly father, we just need to sick him on the devil. I wonder this morning as I close, I wonder again, I wonder if, if we could just all close our eyes no matter where you are no matter what's going on in your life. I wonder, as a Calvary Tabernacle, as members of Calvary Tabernacle, I'm asking you to pray for our pastor and his wife. I want you to close your eyes right now, wherever you are, and just pray. I'm asking you to do that. I'm asking I stand here this morning to tell you that I miss you and I miss your prayers and I miss your worship but I'm also asking you this morning that if you will go before God today because we as a family as we as a church family we need each other we need God would you close your eyes with me wherever you are bow your head. God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to teach us to pray. God, bring us together, God. God, we have not been able to assemble, but God, you've been so strong. You've shown yourself so mighty. God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to be with every, every person, every man, every woman, every child, God. In their home, Lord, right now, I'm asking you to reach down and let feel the presence of the Lord. God, let us feel you. We need you, God. God, prayer is such a necessity in our church, and it's such a necessity in our life. And God, keep us in prayer and keep us close to you and draw us close to you like we never have been before in this time that we live so that when we come together again, God, I ask you to bring great revival. God, we need your presence. God, we need to feel, Lord, what it is that you have for us. I'm asking you right now, wherever you are, to pray and to lift your hands before him and say, God, I am in need of you, but I know you're still the King of kings, and I know that you're still the Lord of lords. God, be with our pastor right now and his wife. God, bless them. Keep your hand upon them. In the name of Jesus, God, give them peace. Give them direction. Lord, I'm asking you right now to reach down. God, we know that you answer prayers. You're still on the throne and you're still God. And sometimes I know, Lord, that you are all that we have, that we need. God, I'm asking you, Lord, right now to reach down, to touch every family. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you this morning. I'm so glad. Amen. I love each and every one of you. Be so glad when we can come together and we can worship him in spirit and in truth. And I can hear you pray again. I'm so looking forward to that day. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.